Hello, my name is Maxim and welcome to my channel. Today we continue our Go dot journey. So we will start with creating the new project. Let's click new, and this will be a project kind of space shooter, but we are going to use uh, like animals for that, like shark and some other. So let's start. So first I'm going to choose my Go dot folder, create new project. Let's call it start attack, something like that. Okay, select current folder. I'm still using compatibility. We will later use forward plus, but right now it should be fine. And click create. Uh, in this game, we are going to create few scenes. So uh, let's start from usually from the world. So this will be the first one. It, at this point of time, it will be empty and I'm going to create new folder things and I would say my scene here. Uh, next scene which I'm going to create, that's also will be area 2D as in the previous video. We're going to use uh, collision detection as we already did before. So I'm using area 2D and we also need to add few components like sprite. And let's rename this to the player. And previously we used uh, collision, but that was collision shape. And this time we are going to use collision polygon. We will see what's the difference between them. So let's create this one. And let's save the scene. And let's start from creating our player. So first we need to import our assets. For assets, we will create the folder assets and I downloaded assets from the website. I will share the link with you. And we like this asset is sprite sheet, but as of now we are not going to use any animation. So I would drag it here. And also we need a few more because this will be our player. Uh, we also need assets which will be our enemy. So let me select assets for the enemy. But probably I need to rename. Let's create folders to have a better structure like player. Then I would create enemy. So enemy would be in the enemy folder. And player we are going to put into the player folder. And also uh, like our, we need like some and the ammo, which we'll go into use. And in my case, it will be the sword. So when I click the button, shark would launch the sword. So let me drag this asset. So we will see everything later. So yeah, now we're ready. Assets imported. I will share the link. This like assets include many different kinds of weapon, weapon and different kinds of animals. So you may use what you like. And let's start. So first we start with the player. So we have the idle uh, animation. So there is multiple slides. It's kind of some kind of shark. And I want to have only one. I need to specify amount of H frames. But also you see it's kind of blurred. This is the pixel art. So we need to make some configuration changes to our go.editor to correctly display our sprites. So how we can do it, we can go project, project settings, and here we need to do few changes. So first let's start from the window. Um, for pixel art, this is too big. So let's use something like this. It will make a window much smaller. Uh, but also when we start the game, I want to see bigger window, like it, to, it will be scaled. So I can click here, advanced setting. And here in the window over uh, with override, I can do uh, like this on seven to zero. So that's first what we need to change. That next on the stretch, we want to set canvas items. And finally, on the rendering, so let me let remove advanced setting because it will be easier to find. So rendering and here on the rendering method, I'm sorry, not the rendering method, the texture, it should be nearest. So once I change this, we see pixels. 
So now we are ready to continue. So let's create our um, collision shape. So in previous video, we used uh, collision shape, where like box, cylinder, but here we can draw our own collision shape. So how to do it? I can click here on the view and I can start clicking on my fish. So I can click here, like here, like here, and to, to draw some, some shape. Okay, like this. So, and here we got our collision shape. Uh, let's also create the script folder because we want to uh, create movement for our shark. So I will go into create new folder, scripts, and here for player, I'm going to add script. Our movement will be pretty simple. We will be, at this point of time, we will be moving only up and down. So what we need is the function process. And in this function, we are going to read uh, input from the keyboard, but also previously we used, uh, we created new actions, but in this case, we are going to use built-in. So what I can do, if input is action, pressed and there is the built-in called ui up and i would do some action and i would use the same is action pressed and i'm going to use ui down for this one now let's add our shark to the world. So I click here, instantiate and player, and let's move it somewhere here. And let's see, we want to move it top and down. So let's open the transform tab. So I see right now position on the X and position on the Y. So when I move in uh, to the top, I see that Y is decreasing. But when I move into the bottom, I see Y is increasing. So that's how we're going to handle out our movement. So let's back to the script. So if you're moving up, so we want to change position y, position dot y, and we need to decrease position y. And we're going to use speed multiplied by delta. We need to introduce variable speed. We can do it uh, export var speed, and let's set it like to the 200. And in second case, it will be the same, but I'm going to multiply. Now, when I launch the game, my shark should be moved. But before we do that, let's kind of create some background, which will be kind of ocean. So I can add new node, which will be color rect. And later we would change this also how it behave. But right now I'm going to stretch this and select color something like uh, green, blue, something like ocean. Yeah, I think this should be fine. So let's move it. Uh, make sure this color act on the top, otherwise uh, you won't be visible, your shark. And now I can launch the game, click select current. So when we have our shark, and if I click uh, arrow up, on arrow down, I see that my shark is moving. And next, what we are going to create, it will be the enemy. So create new scene. We are also going to use area 2D. Create a similar, we will add sprite 2D. And let's use also a polygon collision shape. Uh, in my assets, I have the enemy sprite. Let's drag it here i have again four frames so here is our enemy but also it's like kind of looking to the right and i want to flip because our enemy would be moving from the right side of the screen to the left side where our player is located so i can go uh, to the offset and i can clip click flip edge let's save the scene 
and let's create the polygon shape. Let's do something like this. Something not super complicated. Okay, I think this should be fine. And let's add script because we are going to need it for a collision, but it's called area 2D, so let's rename it first. Enemy. And add the script. It still wants the name script enemy, we can rename it. So scripts open and let's type enemy. Uh, first, we are going to create movement for the enemy. It will be really simple. We will just be moving from the right screen, right part of the screen to the left one. So in the uh, process, I'm just going to change the position X, position X, and let's also back to the world to see this on the example. So for example, we have our player here and let's see. So position X, we have 52. When I moved to the right, it's increasing. When I move to the left, it's decreasing. So for our enemy, we need to decrease. Uh, let's go to the script and let's decrease by using speed multiplied by delta. Let's introduce export variable called speed and let's set it to the 100. And now we should be ready to add but by the way, let's rename it because it's confusing to have seen a name like that renamed with the enemy. Okay, now let's add enemy to the, our screen. But in my like, I my uh, selector was on the player, so it's created as child of the player. I don't want that. It needs to be child of the world. So now let's drag enemy here, and let's run the game, and we should see enemy movement. So as you may see, enemy is moving. And by the way, I changed here movement to the 10 because it was like too, too fast. And I changed it through the editor. So you see it's moving very slowly. Next, what we are going to create is our attack. So we'll create new thing. And in this case, we will be using rigid body. So rigid body is for physics. Like for our uh, like attack, like for our attack um, objects, we can kind of do it with simple shape like area. But just for learning purposes, let's use rigid body 2D, and we almost don't need any script to make it work. So let's create rigid body, and we will of course need to add sprite. So let's add the sprite. In this case, it will be our player. And I have this sword. Let's rotate it like this. And we need also to create collision shape. So collision shape 2D. And let's use here. Uh, I think capsule shape would work. Let's let's first rotate and let's resize it. Let's make it bigger and let's rotate it a bit more to have it like this. Okay, I think it should be fine. At this point, we don't need anything else. Let's rename the thing to the sword. Oh, by the way, let's change a few, few more parameters. So in the rigid body itself. So first, gravity. We don't want the gravity because if we have gravity, it will immediately fall down. So I would set gravity scale to the zero. Also, I want uh, my object to move. Like I can do it, of course, from the code, but I can just simply set here velocity, like something like 100. Let's say the thing, and all, all, all like object is almost ready. We can add it here, and we will see that it's moving. Uh, but also, we want to create the collisions. So let's start by def by defining. So first, when uh, 
our sword uh, collide with the enemy. We want enemy to be destroyed also is end sword. And also, uh, in our case, when player colliding with enemy, we want the player to be destroyed. So let's start. So let's go here first for the enemy. Uh, previously, we used area entered for a collision, but in this case, we cannot use that. Uh, because our sword is not an enemy, I'm sorry, not the area, but it's a body. So I'm going to click on the body entered and I can click connect so, and click connect. So we create method on body entered. So what do you want to do when our sword collide with and you want to destroy both? So first what I can do, I can destroy enemy using Q3. And next, what I'm going to do is to call body Q3. So it will destroy both objects because in this case, body is the object with which our enemy is colliding. So that's, that's the sword. So Q3 destroy enemy and body destroy the sword. But also we want like not to destroy enemy from the first uh, collision. We can create something like three lives for our enemy so let's create lives three and every time when collision is happening we decrease lives by one and if lives less or equal zero we will be calling the q3 okay and now we can add no because uh, our sword right now won't be launched because we like do not create this functionality. So let's go to the player. We want to, when we click a button, to launch our particles so like sword. So how we can do it? First, we need to add uh, pre preload our theme. So there is the nice trick what you can use. So you can click here on the sword, select, then click Control and move it right here. And as you see, it's immediately created preload uh, constant. And we can use create new function called fire. In this function, we will create new instance of sword and we would launch it. So let's create. So we can use this sword and we need to call it instantiate. It will create new uh, kind of thing with this uh, object, but it won't be added anywhere. So we also want to add it as the child object to the something. We can add it as child to the player, or we can add it as child to the world. So let's do it for the world. So we can define our world as get three, get three, and here we can call current scene because we are launching the world. So current scene will be the world. And then I can do world add child and sword. Uh, we still have one problem, but first like, let's launch the game. And we won't see nothing because we forgot to add input. So we want to create input is action. In this case, I will use just press because we don't want someone to click like space and uh, keep it pressed and it would shoot so i'm using the action ui accept and what i'm going to do i simply would call fire so now we should be ready to start the game let's start so i can click pre uh, space and you see i have words but they launching somewhere at the top because they launching based on um position uh, to the world node. And you see they have physics because they are kind of moving when they interact with each other. So let's close the game and let's fix this. How we can do it? So it's simple. We need to change the position uh, relative to the player. So how we can do it? We can do, we can set like SV dot position equal to position because we in the player script. So it will set sword position equal to the player. 
Uh, now let's back to the enemy and okay, we already have a collision. Uh, so let's uh, let's also create collision for the player. So when player interact with enemy, we want both of them to be destroyed. And because both of them is area 2D, so we can use on the player, we can use area enter 2D, click connect. And what do we want to do here? We want to destroy enemy. And we want to destroy um, our, like both player, first player, then enemy. Uh, now let's add multiple enemies to the screen and let's start the game. So I can use Ctrl D to clone the enemies and let's move them somewhere uh, behind of screen and just uh, change the position of each of them. Something like this. Let's select all of them and move a bit more. And let's start the game and let's see if we can destroy them. So I'm starting the game. So when you see enemies flying, I can shoot and I can destroy them. But we need to increase the speed of our sword. Uh, but we also have another problem. So let me start the game one more time, but I won't show you the game screen. I'm just going to launch the multiple uh, swords and here in the go dot I can click remote and I can see how many objects are created. So every time when I launch uh, the sword and every time an enemy is created, those objects are created but not destroyed even if they leave the screen. And after some time it will become the issue. So we need somehow uh, to destroy them once they leave uh, the screen. So let's close the game. And it's really simple to do. Let's click on the sword and let's add new object. So it's called visible on screen notifier. So I click create. And here I need to give a shape. Similar to the collision, I define something like this. And we have signals screen entered and screen exit so i can click screen exit but before i need to create the uh, script for my sword so i click create script yeah we, we do have it now and then i can select this visible on screen notifier and click screen exit i can connect and what do we want to do here is simply call q3 and let's do the same for the enemy Let's add visible on screen notifier 2D. Let's give it some shape. Something like this should be fine. And once screen is exited, connect it to the click connect. And also what we're going to call Q3. So let's back to this word. We want to increase speed for swords to move a bit faster. Let's do it like 200. And now let's start the game. Let's go to the remote tab. So right now there is only enemy, but once they leave the screen, they should be gone. And same I can do with the our sword. So you see, I'm launching a lot of them. And once they leave the screen, they getting destroyed. Um, so that's all for today's video. In next video, we are going to create enemy spawner, like which will automatically spawn the enemies. So stay tuned and have a nice day.